Welcome back to Dude Craft Guitars, day at the Dude Ranch and the Naima build. Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a crisp little autumn morning here. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to make a sound on this thing. Um, I've still got a lot of, uh, a lot of sanding yet to go. Got to route for the controls, but I want to make sure that the controls work. So I'm going to jump the gun a little bit. Um, let me get a couple of screws on these just to hold them. I'm going to grab a couple of strings, the piezo system. Let's just see if we can make some noise and then we'll go from there and make some real noise. All right, so what we've got is the Wavelink Solo from Seymour Duncan. And the way they've got this thing configured, this is for acoustic piezo, and this is for an in-pin jack. We're not going to use it that way. Uh, but what this does is the uh, good old-fashioned uh, sits under the saddle type piezo. So we're just going to finagle it for now, and then we'll deal with the details later. Uh, but what we're going to end up doing is actually putting this uh, under there, uh, drilling a little hole, and then inserting it up, boom, laying it down. But again, that, that's going to be later. Uh, what they do is they, they've got this module so you can get, uh, you could just run it straight if you'd like, you got the little screwdriver control for treble and bass, and then whatever preamping system you want to, or this is the preamp, but I mean whatever amp system you want to go from there. Uh, direct box, whatever you're doing. But they've got it set up so that you can put, uh, they make a little volume tone module that plugs in and it goes in the sound hole of your acoustic and sits really neat, it's all curved. That's all fine and dandy, but we're not doing that. We're doing uh, like a jazz guitar, like a solid body electric. So what I did is I took a cable that I had and, you know, through trial and error trying to figure out which one was, was which on the, because uh, you, you've got a signal coming here into the volume pot, then the signal going back, return signal. And I just took a guess and got the right one. But <laughs> so there's that. And then I wired, of course, the tone pot to it. So I tested this stuff out on the amplifier, you know, just knocking around the piezo with my finger, and that worked. So now what we're going to do is I just want to hear an actual guitar string sound. So let me do this real quickly. No, I haven't done the frets on this thing yet. Even so, there's, there's still a lot of work. This is really jumping the gun. But I want to make sure this, this unit works before I go cutting the, uh, the control access hole. Because if it doesn't work and i got to get something else, then I'm going to have to have a control access hole for that. So, I mean, when it's... We say custom guitar. We really are talking custom. I mean, cause that's that's what we got going on. Um, never have been a real fan of these ball ends. They sound like a great idea when they first came out, but I use them and this I don't trust them anymore. I've had them pop too many times. So what I'm doing is kind of like a wrap around. If you noticed. You know, obviously, if I was setting this up to tune it up and all that, I you know, want to stretch these strings really well. But right now, I just want to hear some plinking. And looks like the height looks pretty good. I could probably come down a little bit, uh, maybe dig the channel a little bit more to compensate for the piezo. Or is it piezo, piezo, piezo? What do you guys like to call it? To me, it's piezo. I just call it. Uh, but it looks like all the lineup is good. That that's a good thing to know. And let's see, let's see what we could do to make this work here. I'm just gonna tape the bejeebas out of it. Now, 
Now, if we did this as an in-pin jack, what I should have done is routed some type of box under that so that I wouldn't have to cut a big hole in the back. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is actually coming up this way so it goes out the side with a little, you know, football jack like, like again, like a normal electric guitar. And I'll probably pull those back further from where I'm taping them. How many guys you know would totally rock that on stage, huh? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go uh, grab the amplifier cable, see if I can get some, some noise going. Hang tight. All right, I don't know what that's going to sound like. Uh, I've got a microphone right in front of the amp. I got the amp in the other room, but I think you can hear that. All right, so I'm going to plug it in. Fix this plug, oh my gosh. Uh oh. What do I do? Okay. on the uh, tone capacitor. Let's see this. I could probably change it here. Turn up a little more bass. Ah, I can't hardly get to those things. Let me go get a mini screwdriver. Again, Vernon's going to be playing jazz on this thing. Ah. Yeah, definitely got to finish doing the fret leveling. I think the first fret is actually higher than the zero fret. Ah, where's that capo when you need it? Oh, whatever. We don't want it to be dull, but we don't need it to be tinny either. Yeah. Here's my concern. It's already pulling out of that. Okay, yeah, so I definitely have to re finish doing the uh, fret leveling. The other thing is I noticed the, uh, the feed in here, these are grabbing, so I've got it Tighten that up. Um, yeah, once I finish doing the fret leveling, it's going to be a big, big difference. Um, not so sure about that integrated. Not mostly because I don't know if it's tall enough. But once I get this carved down a little more here, I think that's really going to help. And uh, yeah, it's going to look pretty cool. So that's, that's the work that we got for us. I think this system is going to work sound-wise. So what I'm going to do is create the cavity in the back. And, uh, you know, obviously still got to do sanding and finishing. But I uh, want to finish this up and make this right. And I think that, yeah, that'll be fine. I mean, if he was a headband, it would be one thing. But, you know, he's not going to be playing that hard that it's going to rattle out of that space or not. So I think that looks good. Um, yeah, this is this is going to, going to work really well. 
Again, I just I want to make the, uh, the the taper down a little more severe because the strings are kind of rubbing against the wood there, and we don't want that. That's just going to create problems. Um, and we could bring this down a little, just a little. I mean, the action is actually quite fine for a classical guitar, but. Uh, Again, your volume's not coming acoustically, so you don't need the strings to be too high. On acoustic guitar, you want them a little bit higher because that, that's what creates your clarity of sound and your volume. But with this being all piezo, 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 whatever you want to call it, um, we could come down more. So I'll do that. I'll probably groove the channel a little bit more for the strip and uh, maybe shave down the bone saddle a little bit. Just to just kind of level it down. It's looking beautiful. Oh, and I, I may, I may, you know, make a, the tape match the color of the rest of the body. Stick around. It's going to be a fun episode. We're going to, like I said, we're going to make some noise so we can make some music. That's awesome. <laughs>